Oh my goodness, guys, we're going to talk about the Life Giver today, episode 16 of BT5 Science. And when I say the Life Giver, I don't actually mean your mom, I mean the sun. So yes, the sun is a star at the center of our solar system. It is almost perfectly spherical and consists of hot plasma interwoven with magnetic fields. And you have to understand that the sun is basically all of the energy that we receive almost in its entirety. There's a little bit of geothermal energy that comes up, but most of that we don't even see. Most of that, barely any little animals and bacteria and stuff live down in the bottom of the ocean and use that as, survi as uh, survival energy. But us, up here on the surface of the Earth, pretty much all the sun. So the sun is just a mega life giver. You think about oil and stuff like that, it all the energy all came from the sun, guys. So, just some cool facts about the sun really quick. The diameter is about 100 times bigger than Earth, which is, of course, pretty big, but it is 330,000 times more massive. Holy crap, that is a big number right there. Also, the, three, the sun is about 304 uh, hydrogen, and about... The rest of it's about helium. Some of those are a little bit bigger elements and high oxygen and carbon and some even a little bit bigger than that, but most of it's just he hydrogen and helium. So when, how old is the sun? The sun is about 4.6 billion years old, just a tiny bit older than Earth, no big deal. It's right around the same amount of time. But how did it form? Do stars just like they're just there. No, they don't. They don't just poof into existence. So there is probably a big bubble of gas left over from an explosion or a supernova of another star, and all this gas eventually coalesced back into itself, and uh, that's what formed our star. So how, what, what, does that, what does that mean? If you just have a bunch of stuff coalescing together, how does it form a sun, though? I don't know. Yeah, actually, I do know. So basically, according to gravity, gravity pulls things together, right, guys? You just have a big blob of these molecules and atoms getting pushed together and pushed together. Mostly hydrogen, of course, with a four, like just like the sun is made of right now. A little bit of helium and a little bit of these other elements, but actually it wasn't 25-ish percent helium when it came together. And I'll talk about that in a little bit while as well. So gravity crushes everything. And if you guys know anything about pressure... As the pressure increases, you get more stuff in a smaller space, it gets hotter. And let me just explain that as a, with a quick example. This does not relate to stars very much at all. But if you have a jar full of air, and there's like 100 molecules in there, which of course there's many, many more than that. They're all moving around and kind of bouncing off each other and stuff like that. They bounce off the sides of the jar, they bounce off each other, and... Um, let's just say we made the jar a little bit smaller. So now we have the jar just a little bit smaller and you have a like 100 molecules still in there. And now they're bouncing off of each other even more. And they're bouncing off of the walls even more. And that's basically an increase in energy. It just makes them move a little bit faster. So that's what happens if you get all this stuff crushed together. You get more energy and more heat. So... Now that we have a bunch of gas getting crushed together, why doesn't it just keep crushing together forever and just form a black hole? Well, what happens is eventually you get so much pressure and so many hydrogen atoms so close together that they actually confuse together. So they don't just get crushed together forever. There's enough pressure, there's enough heat where these hydrogen atoms actually don't want to stay hydrogen atoms. They confuse together to form helium atoms. Whoa ho ho. So once these helium atoms are formed, they're actually just slightly, slightly less massive than the hydrogen atoms. You know, you release a little bit of energy when you create a, a helium atom. And when you say, oh, there's just a tiny little bit of energy, there's just a tiny little bit of matter that turns into energy. But when you think about this tiny, itty, little bit of matter times the speed of light squared, 3 million meters per second squared times the mass, you get a huge amount of energy from that little tiny bit of mass. So that's why it takes billions of years for the sun to actually run out of energy. And yeah, the sun will run out of energy. I'll talk about that in a little bit and what happens to the sun when that happens. But yeah, it does eventually run out of energy, and it's not going to be very soon, but it will happen. So what is the sun? I don't know. We call it a yellow dwarf, it just not specifically for astronomy purposes, just we as a human race usually call it a yellow dwarf, which is a main sequence star, and uh, it's a pretty reasonably average star, nothing too crazy. It's probably brighter, mo brighter than most stars, 
but it's nowhere near the size of some of the super giant mega stars that are out there. And yeah, actually, the official name of these stars is Super Giants. Yeah, I know, it's kind of crazy, but it's cool as well. So actually, all colors of light do come from the sun, so why do we call it a yellow dwarf? And when you look at the sun, does it look kind of yellow? Yeah, actually, that's true. It actually does appear kind of yellow. And the reason for that is that the uh, wavelengths that the sun releases are, of course, white light, which is all of the different uh, wavelengths of light. But when it touches the atmosphere, the atmosphere absorbs some of those rays and refracts some of those, wa some of those uh, waves. Mostly the purplish spectrum and a little bit of uh, a little bit of other things, and it basically makes it look yellow. So that's why we have a yellow-looking star. And since we're talking about the atmosphere, whoa, wait, hold on a second. Why does the sun look red when it's rising or setting? Or why does the moon have a different color when it's rising or setting? It's kind of the same. Act it's kind of the same answer, actually. So it looks red because the light has to go through more atmosphere. And most of the higher energy light is scattered when it has to go through that much atmosphere. If you think about the edge of Earth, uh, when, it, when the sun is directly up in the sky, it only has to go through a tiny bit of atmosphere. But when it's all the way at the very edge over there, it has to go through a lot of atmosphere just to get to us. And all that light is scattered. And the ones that are scattered the least are the lower, or the longer wavelength lights, which is the lower energy wave, lower energy light which is the reddish light. So that's why the moon, when you see it over at the horizon over there, that looks kind of pinkish or red or something like that. And then that's why the sun also looks kind of pinkish and red and a little bit more orangish is because of those longer wavelengths getting through the atmosphere. So now that you guys understand a little bit about the sun, let's explain what will happen when the sun dies. Oh, no. Yeah, the sun's going to die. Yeah. So, yeah, all stars actually have a birth and a death. Like I said, they coalesce, they get a bunch of gas and stuff that coalesce together. That's how they're born. Uh, the sun will actually eventually run out of hydrogen. So yeah, once the sun, you know, the, the hydrogen atoms fuse together into helium and you don't have any more hydrogen atoms then. What happens when you get no hydrogen atoms? Well, actually what's going to happen is when you get all these, when you get uh, the sun mostly helium and much less hydrogen, in fact, it's not going to be zero hydrogen, just much, much less hydrogen, um, the star is actually going to start shrinking a little bit. It's actually going to make a little bit less energy pushing out, which, of course, is fusion. Fusion pushes the sun out, and gravity pushes the sun in. And the gravity is going to start taking over just a little bit. And eventually, at some point, there's going to be so much pressure and so much heat that you can actually make helium fuse to make even bigger elements. But there's still a problem with that, because the only really bigger elements that our sun or the mass of our sun can actually make is probably carbon and probably a little bit of oxygen too. Maybe oxygen. We're not really 100% sure, but probably oxygen as well. So what happens when you run out of carbon and oxygen? Well, that's not too good, guys. Uh, what's going to happen is the sun, the star is basically going to slowly get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and less energy and less energy is going to be coming out of the sun and it's just going to turn into this white dwarf or this very, very dim object in our solar system. But this is not going to happen for about another 5 billion years. So we do have quite a bit of time here. You know, if we're, run if we're worried about our sun running out of energy, of course, we can probably build spaceships by then and travel to other stars and travel to other places. And probably we'll be on top of making our own fusion in no time and able to travel through billions upon billions of miles of uh, space. And we're probably, if in my opinion... I just have to throw this out there. We're probably never going to die. The human race is probably going to become immortal. And I think that is just something that is unbelievably interesting to think that we're going to become an immortal race. And if you guys want me to talk about that in another video, we could totally do that. I'm definitely up for that. So that's all I got for today's video. Um, if the death of the sun made you a little bit unhappy, I'm sorry. Maybe we'll talk about some more happy topics a little bit later. But I need topics, guys. I actually, I have like three more topics that I could possibly do, but some of them I'm just kind of iffy about if I want to do them. And I need more. So please, in the comments down there, give me some good topics. Just be as specific as you want. I really like specificity. I don't know if that's a real word, but it sounded good. So anyways, thanks for watching, and have a great day.